Hi, and welcome to Road to Reason, a skeptic guide to the 21st century. I'm David Tamayo, President and Founder of Hispanic American Free Thinkers. And with me today, I have the honor, the pleasure, and he claims he's very smart, so I'm going to see how smart he is today. Scott Maddox. Welcome, Scott. Thank you. Uh, Eric, tell me something, tell me a couple of things about you that I haven't, that I don't know yet. Okay. But I, so something I don't know. Come on. Uh, you know, Oh, they know what Wow. I'm impressed now. I'm impressed now. That's like every, every kid's dream. <laughs> and, well, today we're also going to be uh, talking with Greta Christina. Uh, she has a new book out. Uh, very popular author, and uh, The Way of the Heathen is the name of the book, uh, A Practice uh, in Atheism in Everyday Life. So we'll tell you, we have, we have tons of questions, we're not going to be able to cover every question, but uh, I think we're going to have a great and interesting uh, conversation with her today, and uh, hopefully uh, uh, we're going to do some news and announcements first. So if you know someone who's really a fan of her and wants to see the show right now, pick up the phone, text them, whatever, so they can uh, connect right now uh, via Ustream or through uh, the channel over here. Okay. Uh, so why don't we start with, uh, I think we only have one announcement today. And that is that on August 7th, uh, from 1 to 4 p.m., in Richmond, Virginia, uh, there's a group there called Save by Science. And they're going to be doing an event with the assistance of the American Humanist, uh, with the uh, Atheist Alliance of America, and with the uh, local Universalist Church. And in this uh, uh, event, it's called uh, Leaving Religion Behind, Special Challenges for the African American and Hispanic Communities. And we're going to have a, a, a table there, a panel, that will include uh, Candace Gorham, as she's a great author, and Mandisa Thomas, who's the uh, president of uh, Latin Man Believers, and also at uh, Sylvia uh, Lynch, and uh, your truly, and it's going to be moderated by Tiffany Green and Robert Pensack. So this is going to be in Richmond, Virginia, August 7th, from 1 to 4 p.m., and they always have all kinds of uh, good uh, goodies in there to eat and drink, so you don't feel that uh, you're starving, and the conversation is open and, and really good, and, and uh, gets recorded also, so if you don't get a chance to see it, that's a, a good thing to do. Uh, I think it's going to be a lot of fun, and I, I hope you can join us uh, over there. Now, so that's the only announcement I think I have, so what am I do? What, news? Yes, yes. All right, why don't you start with some good news? What's the good news? So, what the first is that the non-religious are the country where the religious are made in black. Really, I guess one of the main goals of the reason is to get the political class in the black. You know, they ask people to come in and talk in politics, so it's a in getting elected to office and uh, get up to vote. Uh, so, is, is it by non religious, do they mean people that don't follow a religion or that are uh, uh, not religious? Yeah, it would be like non religious, you know, like, 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 non religious. Maybe people, you think you know, people. Other religions are one category, which is like a lot of different things that never would be like 21 percent. So, and in the top three, you know, really, the number one the top three, better to apply for 20% of the and 20% of the So that's registered voters. Does that mean it's a registered voter? So it's just yeah. a yeah. Okay. So it might be that we, that we were able to encourage more people to... I wonder if the current area is full of candidates that we have for precedence who may have something to do with that also. Not full candidates, but in the third of the... In fact, from uh, 2015 to 2016, so back in 2008, uh, I remember doing uh, 14% and now I'm at 21%. Wow, that's a huge part of the yeah. yeah. in this eight years. So, uh, I would just like to address that to my degree for this is that that religious voters uh, were surveyed in general. The religious values and beliefs of the president is important. Thirty-two percent of those were from back in the day, and in 2016, only sixty-two percent were from that. And uh, another thing is that you know, people do 
It always bothers me a little bit when people say, uh, no, uh, my vote doesn't make a difference, I'm not going to go vote. Uh, I think Christina even touched that a, a, a little bit in her, in her new book. And uh, also, uh, I mean, I, I tell people, listen, here in Virginia, we have had a candidates that have won by 160 votes, you know, that, that made a difference between someone really radical to one end or not. Mm -hmm. So it makes, I think everybody's vote makes, it makes a difference, and getting involved uh, creates also awareness. So I'm glad to see, because I think the more, the more nuns that are registered, the better it is for, for society as a whole, because they'll be talking about, hey, because my candidate is big. Instead of saying, eh, I don't care about those things, I'm not going to look at it. Yeah. Or, 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 To a, a, a sad story instead, and that is uh, that uh, unfortunately uh, this week uh, was really a bad week for uh, for a lot of people, and, and uh, well, one of them was actually a blogger. And since we're, we're going to be talking to a blogger today, I think it seems fitting to, to mention this one as part of our news. And, and that is that uh, uh, I'm just going to read the name to make sure I don't botch it too much. Candil uh, Bala. Uh, a blogger, a famous, very famous blogger in Pakistan, was murdered by her brother, by her own brother, uh, for honor killing. Uh, she was a blogger. She talked about uh, women's rights. Uh, she talked about fashion. She dressed very westernly. She had a Pakistan way to die. Yes, it is. Yeah. She was great. She was fantastic. And, she, and I think she was making, you know, even by her own style, was, you know, creating this. She had tons and tons of followers. And uh, her own brother, uh, his name is Mohammed Wasim, uh, killed her. She was only 26 years old, very young, uh, with a lot to give still. And uh, he dropped her and then uh, strangled her. I mean, it doesn't get any, any more personal than that, and, you know, with your own hands, killing somebody your, of your own kin. Well, and, and, you know, I'm not sure how much of, of an excuse it is to produce a... Uh, misguided reason, in other words, is, is their religious beliefs. Is this belief that that honor is restored by murdering somebody? When you know most of the Western world thinks the opposite: murdering somebody doesn't restore honor; it takes away honor from, especially from murder. And so, uh, yeah, this is one person, this is a highly visible, popular person who, you know, honestly, has a cycle of her and who we are about to be. But, you know, 2016, there were 1,100 honestly in Pakistan alone. And I don't know how many were in 2014, but I can only assume that it was close to that number. Yeah. You know, and it's like, how many honestly over, you know, the history of this, the history of Pakistan? And, and, you know, it's a tool. It's a, it's a, unfortunately, it's a tool that some religions, well, in this case, the, the religion of peace and love, that, uh, that uses to silence the critics, to silence yeah. others that have other ideas. Uh, it's a it, it, it really proves that when you can't argue logically and you can't do it with, with arguments, that you, okay, well, let's just do it by force. And the only reason, I mean, he even brought her before killing her to make sure she wouldn't fight back. 
Uh, to me, it's, there are a lot of lessons can be, that can be brought up from this that, and so it's not so unnecessary and so bad that should be explained that, you know, uh, to, uh, to especially the people that believe in this thing. Uh, I mean, I, I, I see this as a great tragedy, and, and we see that a lot in Bangladesh, we see this uh, a lot in, in other places, and, and it's never, you know, it seems to be sort of the same religion, the same concept folks, the same... Uh, 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 religious education uh, level, that kind of stuff. Uh, and so it's very sad, very sad. Yeah. I mean, hopefully, you know, we're going to talk to you and we're going to be part of the conversation and we're going to be there quickly. No, it's illegal and he was arrested. Uh, but, you know, you have in Pakistan and in other nations like that, you have uh, basically two or three nations within a nation where the beliefs of one group is totally different than the actual laws of the, of the city, and so there's often a lot of protection of those people in there. Anyway, uh, we have uh, one more piece of news uh, real quick before we go into our break, so we can come back and talk to Greta Christina. Uh, whatever you want. Uh, but what was the reason about when I to the people who are supposed to be the people who are supposed to be the people who are supposed to be the people who are supposed to how can, how can we prevent it? How can this, I mean, this is someone that seems apparently fine. And we've seen it here in our own country and we see it in other places where uh, people just get this religion virus and uh, they do like a lot of other people do. They go in and go and look for the stuff that they, they, that they want uh, to see and nothing else. So, anyway, um, I guess we'll just do the, uh, the news uh, story. Jump of the week. Yes, we got to do that one. So, uh, what do you call Christian who goes to church in the week? Goes to church in uh, what? In Pokemon. Aww. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, uh, Christian of the week, uh, also before we go, Christian of the week for obvious reasons that we already explained is uh, from Bill Balak. Uh, Bala. uh, she's the Christian of the week. Uh, she's the... Uh, I hope others will, you know, where they shut one person down, I, I hope another hundred come out. Yes. All right, uh, we're going to go to a break, and when we come back, we'll be with Greta Christina.
Hello, and welcome back to Road to Reason, Skeptic's Guide to the 21st Century. I promise we have our guest with us today online, and we're going to pepper her with questions. And if there are any questions you have, you can uh, email them to us or send them uh, via Facebook or find other many ways uh, that you know of uh, to get in touch with us. But uh, we'll call it, put it up in the teleprompter for us. So, why don't you tell us who is Greta Christina? Yeah. Well, Greta Christina has Greta Christina. has been right to touch us with us in topics of the issues and sexuality. I do not to do it now. I am leading to issues, politics, culture, and lots of other very interesting things. She's out there. Company talks about that. She doesn't have nothing to do with that. Coming out of atheists, how to do it, how to help each other. Why are you atheists so angry? Many of the things that took off the goddess and under really sticky stories about pain, power, and religion, unicorns, and more. And her new book out last month is Where is the Human? A practice in atheism in everyday life. So, it's among our first questions in there. Uh, yeah. but, well, why don't we have to step yeah. 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 Welcome, Greta. Uh, I hope, uh, thank you for being with us in the, in the, in the show. And uh, are you ready for us? I'm ready. Let's do it. Well, you know, uh, part, of, part of the problem, I, I maybe I speak for you too, is, is trying not to be too starstruck and, uh, and trying to... Uh, Set up, take a big breath and control ourselves. You know, we're so happy to have you here. You're someone that I've greatly admired since I've met you and uh, continue to admire so this day. So you must be doing something right. It seems like every time I read one of your books, it seems to be getting better and better. Uh, at it. So I guess that's the best next question. Thank so let's start on the title. Let's start with the title. Uh, the title, you know, is The Way of the Heathen, which reminds us of, you know, other titles that have been similar to that kind of thing. And it knows that practicing atheism in, every, in everyday life, it makes it sound a bit like, uh, you know, like the religious people practicing things, you know, rituals and, and, and things of the sort. And... Uh, uh, I had one religious friend of mine said, well, that's the word atheist. I'm not interested in living like an atheist. I'm not, you know, so the, she found it off putting a little bit the word atheism. So I'm wondering if not having the word atheism might also say more books. I don't know. What do you think? I mean, I'm not willing to say that the word atheism So that cho- the choice of the title is in your choice, or was this the editor or the pen shop? Or? Oh, good, good. Oh, when I talk to people about like, coming out of the AC is often making a book uh, on coming out of and, uh, you know, can you talk about, you know, what are uh, some of the experiences with the people that you, uh, you know, uh, interview and talk to you about? I think this book is just fantastic. I've read all your books, and 
the, uh, uh, you did touch uh, on this topic briefly uh, in the book, and I noticed, I noticed you touched on, on so many different aspects, so many different things, and yet uh, you went deep enough, but not, sh- you know, but not too shallow, in order to provide the reader with this, so, you know, you didn't end up with a, someone that would look like a huge Bible and go, oh, this is too thick, I'm not going to read this. Versus trying to say, hey, this looks approachable. I'm not going to be intimidated, and we'll be able to get a lot of uh, a lot of stuff. How, how did you select what things to put in and what things to leave out, and did you or did you leave anything else? A lot of the ones that we were able to put together as a way that we could get into the world of creation and what we have in the future. And a lot of this was just what what do they say? I think it's, uh, when you said that we were both nodding over here and we said that it poses, uh, it's a book that poses also a lot of questions because it's good. It incentivizes people to think about these things. Now, like, one person has all the answers for everything, but uh, it's a good approach, a little bit of a, uh, uh, what is it, the, the, the Sokratian method. method. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, yeah. so, why these words are so
think when people are better at it at, at one aspect of it than others, then we need everybody. Uh, abso- absolutely. Well, now, you touched in your book on, on something that I haven't seen in any other book, uh, and, that I, and something that affects our own secular community, and that is consent. And there have been fights and arguments and this and that, and you, you, I think you did a very good job in, in visiting that. Could you explain a little bit uh, sort of your reasoning for it, and maybe very briefly what, uh, what consent means to you? Thank you. 
It gets in the middle sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Now, instead of related to that, you uh, you mentioned about uh, treating sex as a uh, as music, and I thought that was very poetic and was very nice. And, and you went on to explain all the reasons how the similarities and, and then you know the differences. But I thought it was a good it was a good a, a good analogy. Uh, you brought this up uh, because. You know, when you come out of religion, you have that immorality, sex is bad. If someone is not doing something that is mainstream, and, you know, if someone is into spanking or something now, we are to say, oh, they're weird, they're different. Uh, so, is that, uh, uh, it's a two part. So, I wanted you to talk a little bit about that. But also, uh, before the, the, the show, we were talking amongst ourselves with the production staff and everybody, and the question came up. Somebody wanted to know, wanted us to ask you what you thought or what is meant by sex positive feminism to you. You know, what that means to you. Yes. Um, I think that's what I'm talking about because I have to encourage myself to come to the law of feminism about how it's not going to be a lot of what sex positive means to you. There's a lot. And we're going to have to come to the law of feminism about what that means to you. That's what I'm going to do. But it's definitely what it means to you. For me, who is the belief that sex can be a very positive aspect of people's lives, that sex can be a variety of things that can be enacted in the decades, and not just in the end. So, the list of these results of the field is to be that to that, be that to the end of the play. It's a fair and unusual tool of. Always very, very difficult uh, because I see it other cultural uh, issues, you know, in, in different cultures where you see that intersection of, of what should be versus what's well, this is the way we've always done it, and what's a big deal kind of thing. Question. This is more on the personal side. Um, you and I had coffee some time ago, maybe a 
a year or two ago in San Francisco some time ago. And I remember asking you to give uh, some opinion about uh, Hispanic culture and, and something along those lines, and you weren't too comfortable uh, at that time doing this. But in the book, in this book, you talk about Black Lives Matter, you talk about cultures, misogyny, trans people, and all that, and you did a great job at it. So obviously, you know, you, you've given some thought to this. Uh, was this difficult for you to write about, to make sure you didn't sort of step in the wrong place uh, in doing it? And, uh, you know, how would you recommend that uh, a white person talks about black things or talks about Hispanic things or about, you know, any other things that are not part of their own circle? Because usually people that do that are seen as, oh, well, you're just a white guy or the white woman trying to tell us, you know, how to live things, you know. But you've got, you've done in this book that it can be done, it can be done with a lot of finesse and a lot of facts. And the main thing is that I've tried, if you think that it's a good thing, it's important for instance, the white people talk about race, what they did is talk about sexism, what they did is talk about homophobia and so on. Part of what you did in your book, which I think adds to this, is that you said, and oh, by the way, here are all these other groups that where you can actually go get more information and get better educated. And so it's not just you saying, and this is me and this is my gospel, but you're saying, this is just to start the conversation. Here are all these other places where you can go and get deeper into it. So I thought that was good listing all those, uh, all those audience voting at the end.
When, uh, when I finished reading the book, to me, it, it, it said, wow, this is something that I like the religious people, especially the religious life. You know, there are a lot of uh, people that say, I'm Catholic and this or that, but they, they tend to vote right, they tend to, you know, will support uh, equal marriage and all of those things. Uh, and, and I'm thinking, if someone would look and see this book and see that this is really a very, uh, a very novel way of, of living in your life and looking at all these very hard topics that they will have a better understanding of what atheism actually means. Uh, in the sense that it doesn't mean, a, a lot of times they assume, it means you're going to be a, a bad person, it means you're going to be killing, murdering, raping, it means all these other things. And so I think part of indirectly, uh, all directly, uh, this book speaks to that, that once you finish reading, you say, oh, so this is how atheists live. Wow, this is not that bad. This is pretty good. It's actually the way I've been living, even though I believe in a deal. That, that kind of stuff. I like that. Uh, you know, you said you like that. But uh, uh, there's different kinds of feelings. You know, there's uh, secular feelings, there's Christian 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 feelings, and it's just like a few like terrible things that are often kind of like abortion and things like that. And you feel that maybe, well, a couple of things that really are the different things that 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 are the different Interesting is that when people say, well, everything happens for a reason, 
kind of thing, and you click on that, and, and that's something that as a skeptic, it typically bothers skeptics, and, and yes, everything happens for a reason, but not the reason that you think it happens for. It's not the universe trying to punish you for doing something or, you know, that kind of stuff. So, uh, is this, uh, uh, I think that added uh, uh, some value to the, to, the, because, uh, to the conversation because, you know, we hear all these things on an everyday uh, basis and yet uh, hardly anyone ever addresses them. So. You have a lot of good luck by studying as much as possible, and so this is sort of the same way, in the similar way, the, the opposite, you know. a little bit. You um, uh, have been writing books, and, and like I said before, I consider them to be better and better. Do you start, uh, I'm trying to dig into your process, do you take uh, just, uh, uh, you know, two weeks and whip out a book, or do you nurse it for months and months and months, and then here is the masterpiece, and do you start working on your next one before you're even done with your previous one, or yeah, I'm just trying to find the method to your madness. I don't know. 
And I think it keeps you, it keeps you focused uh, on, on the next. I, I think it, it helps the timing of things. I think you've done a great job. This, this book, certainly, from my perspective, it seems a lot more personal. Uh, I, I felt like I was talking more to you and less to the professional writer or less to the, the professional atheist. It, it, was, it was more of a conversation. You shared probably more than in any other book uh, uh, some aspects of your private life about angry your wife. And, and about, you know, relationships and, and anecdotes and things of this sort that made it uh, seem a lot more personal. We have about 30 seconds left, and I wanted to turn this question of that grenade and then run away. Uh, uh, and, you know, others have had this sense you know, once you take religion away, what do you replace it with?
thank you so much for being with us today. I really appreciate it. And uh, we look forward to speaking with you again in the future. And thank you to the technical staff and everyone uh, involved to reason.